Yes, we're going. Yeah, we're, we're going. Yeah. We're live. See, exactly. I mean, it's just that's what I'm saying. It just kind of happens. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, as you can see, this is not Matt Romy. Uh, this is Stephen Shack. Um, one of the other Aerosmiths out here. Um, been out of Mad Cow for quite a few years. I think it's around seven years now or so. Um, but one of the other techs. So, about fixing stuff. Yeah, so. definitely. So if you don't see Matt Romy out here and you see Steven out here, this is another guy you can help out. Uh, today we're going to go over some hoppers. Um, we got four, four different hoppers. Yes. Uh, we have a uh, regular gravity feed. Um, we've got an HK loader. We've got the, uh, the die rotor. And the GI LBL. So we'll be going over taking those apart, um, cleaning them, just basic general field maintenance. maintenance. Yeah, just general maintenance. So uh, we'll go ahead and get the camera set on the tech mat. And uh, any questions or comments, please drop them in the comment section. All right, we're just going to get set up here. Okay. All right. So, I guess we can start off with the rotor. So this is your typical rotor, obviously customized here by Chad. Um, so basic Ro rotor. Hoppers well, like stickers. Hoppers yeah. like stickers. <laughs> Just be careful you don't break the rules in the tournaments. Um, so this has speed feed in it. Obviously you can kind of see it's kind of worn down. Um, this would be something that you may run into an issue with. Um, you know, with your loaders, if this gets worn out, you might start losing the paint out of it. So, it might be a good time to consider replacing it, Chad. Yeah, I know. It's, um, it's about that time. But it's just something to look out for. Um, most time, the rotors are going to come with a hard seal lid right here. Um, but you can also get them with speed feeds already installed. Um, speed feeds are pretty easy to take care of and install on these, so not a big deal. Um, but let's say you're playing, you're running, you get low on paint, you break some paint inside your loader, you're diving or whatever. Um, to take care of that, all you're going to do is pull this black tab right here up. You can see that's pulled up. Push in on the black button right here, and then lift on the whole top end of the rope. So that all comes off. Now you can get inside the top of your shell. We can wipe all this out. Um, when you go and install your speed feeds, you'll have five screws. One right here, one right there, two up there, and then one down here in the front. So you'll take that out. And then this top plate right here, this whole plate on the top edge, that'll pop off. And then that's how you can slide your speed feed in. And then this plate just sandwiches that down. And uh, put your four, five screws back in and you're good to go. Um, right down in here is where your spring for the hard lid is held by a pin. Um, so when you go to pop that out, um, there are instructions in the manual for it, but you'll basically take a small screwdriver, push the pin to the side, and then disengage that spring and then you'll twist the lid sideways and it'll pop out so then you can take your uh, plastic or rain cover lid however you want to call it um, put your hard lid out so then you can put your speed feet in so that's the side you just wipe all that out pretty easy there we get your actual uh, rotor uh, one thing you always want to check make sure the spring in this little floor plate is good um, the older the later generations of the rotor ad added this in to help the paint roll forward because um, so they notice it would just sit in the back and wouldn't fall in. Uh, so just make sure your spring's good in there. Take floor plate out. We're just going to push forward on this tab. The whole floor plate comes up. And you set that aside. You can just wipe that down with a rag. There's no electronics or anything on it. Just a mechanical spring, a bunch of plastic. So then we come down to your main guts of your rotor. This is your main drive system. You got your gear right here. All you're going to do is take these two red tabs. Pull those aside, the little pinwheel gear comes out, and you'll just pick up at this edge and slide it out from under the lip right here. So we'll pop that out, wipe that off, set that to the side, and then you have your rotor itself. So you can wipe that down, clean that off. Um, when you're able to tell between an early generation rotor and a later generation rotor, is uh, the very first ones didn't have this little what was called a shark fin on the back side just helps with jamming um, helps alleviate that problem so that's how you can kind of identify some of them and then you can take your bottom base plate out it's got your gears on the bottom wipe that down 
and then you have your gear system. So you can wipe all that off. You can get down um, with just a regular barrel uh, swab squeegee. You can clean out your little feed neck right there. Um, you know, just keep an eye on these gears. Make sure they're not worn down um, or damaged in any way. And when you go to install everything back in, um, that you're not hanging gears up on top of each other. So you can wipe all this out. You got any paint in here? Um, always make sure you're using good name brand batteries. Um, and you get your Velcro straps over the top. Just hold them in there. You don't pop them out while you're playing. If you take a good dive or something like that. So once you get everything wiped down um, and just using regular microfiber is all you got to do. Just wipe all the oil and grease and everything off of this. Make sure there's no other shell or hair or anything um, in your gears, anything that's going to cause them to bind up. Obviously Chad um, has been around some dogs lately and has a little bit of hair in there. So we'll take our gear plate, drop that back in. And it just drops right down. You see it meshes with this white gear right there pretty well. So once that's dropped in, bring our base plate back in and this actually has to come under this lip and then drop down and you kind of twist it and it'll just drop into place with the gears below it take our rotor make sure the gear side is down so you have this little black uh, tab up top that'll sit nicely in there it'll mesh into your gears then we're gonna take our little pinwheel paddle plate um, Drop that under our tab in front, and then drop the back down, and that should just pop right into place. And then while holding that down, you're just going to pull these red tabs over with your thumb. So you can just pull those over, make sure they're over that top wheel, and that's what's going to hold that in place. And they'll snap all the way over just like that. That's all good. Take our floor plate. And you're just going to go nose in first, pop that under these two front white tabs right here, push that all the way forward, and then come to the back and you're just going to push straight down until it clicks. Let your floor plate up, make sure that's not getting hung up on anything, and your floor plate is back in. To reinstall your nose cone, you've got this tab up front, you're going to hook that right in that hole right there on the front. So once that's hooked in, you just slide back till the front of the loader lines up and this gets pretty close to each other and pretty close to flush. Push in on the black tab, help that come under, slide it down till it pops out right here, and then we're just going to slide that tab down on top. Rotors all back together, we can turn it on, you can hear it run, make sure there's no problems there. Pull back on your uh, shark fin underneath, you should hear it stop and then go again. And your rotor's back together and clean. So guess we do the HK loader next? Yeah. All right, this is our HK loader. Um, you guys will start to kind of notice that a lot of the more uh, modern loaders, they all kind of follow the same pattern with taking them apart. Um, kind of keeps things a little bit simple. With your HK, um, obviously you have your controls here on the back, um, your power, and then your manual um, unjam. So we'll go ahead and pull this tab right on the back here. Let's see if we can get that. Pull back on that, and that'll let your speed feeder lid come up. You've got another tab just like the rotor right here that you have to lift up on. Kind of see you lift that little tab up. And then you're just going to pull up on this blue tab. Sorry, it's kind of difficult doing it out of the way. You're just going to kind of push up on that. And the whole top pops off. Um, so you can kind of see how that tab sits in there. And it's just plastic force. It, it doesn't click into anything. You just pull up on it and it'll disengage. So once you get that off, now you have the top of your loader. Um, very similar to the rotor. If you're going to change out your um, feed at the top, there's all your screws for it right here. Very easy access, easy to get to. Um, so not a big deal right there. Wipe all that down just with regular microfiber. So we'll set that to the side. 
Now we come to our main uh, base tray. Um, similar to the rotor, you, instead of in the back here, it's actually up at the front. You have your spring plate. Um, just make sure that's moving properly. You don't have anything caught in there, anything uh, jammed or deformed paintball or stick or something underneath it. Um, get the floor plate out. You've got this black tab right here. We're going to pull forward on that and just pick up the floor plate. So floor plate will come out. And now you have your um, base bottom tray. You can wipe all that out with regular microfiber. Like I said, you can then use your uh, regular barrel squeegee in there to clean out your feed neck. Uh, make sure there's no debris or uh, broken shell or anything in there. This is where you can see your controls for those rear buttons at the back. Um, so you just want to make sure those are moving properly. Um, if they're kind of gumming up, you might want to check that see if there's some paint or some shell in there. So we'll set that to the side. And here you have your main tray. Um, you want to be pretty careful when you're cleaning this. Obviously all of your electronics are right here at the back. You can see your board is right there on the side and it's pretty well exposed. So just be careful. Um, you know, don't press on anything too hard. You're just going to use a regular microfiber. You've got your springs here for your buttons on the back and you can see you can turn it on. You got your light comes on right there. Um, and we can see everything moves up on top. This is usually about as far as you need to take it down. Um, you, know, you can lift that spring up, make sure that your spring on this is all good. And basically this whole basically drive wheel right here will lift up. Um, just make sure that that all pops up and it's not out of place. That's kind of your an -and jam feature. You'll see it kind of, see if I can get a good view of that. Maybe not, but it actually picks up and it will pop over the paintball if it gets jammed in there. Um, so you can wipe all that down. Uh, so to take this off, I'm trying to figure out how to do this while you guys can see it, but you basically have a little nub sticking off right here. Uh, to get this tray out, all we're going to do is pull up on the nub and we're going to twist it and it'll pop in. There's little grooves in here and we'll twist that nub until it uh, pops into one of the other grooves and then this whole tray will actually come out. We can set that to the side and then you're able to get down at your bottom. Uh, clean all that out, wipe it down, regular microfiber, um, no big deal. Just make sure everything's nice and clean, make sure your spring plate's moving properly um, and again just um, putting your good batteries in there batteries are right here at the back. Um, to change your batteries out on this loader you're just going to pull up on uh, this plastic tab and then flip that tray down and there you got your two double A's. So we'll pop that tray back up. You can hear it snap in place. We'll take our anti-jam wheel, drop that back down And you just line the nubs up with it. And then pull up on your piston. Let's see if we kind of got that. You can see how it's sticking up a little bit farther. Pull that up, twist it, and then you're going to just twist till it locks back in place. And then you should be able to pull up on that anti jam wheel and it won't come off make sure that's all set in place there and then at this point you can even test it a little bit and you can push down on this button make sure everything spins freely nothing gets hung up and there's no shell or anything uh, impeding the movement it's got all that back together very easy to drop it back in place you're going to take the rear of your tray drop that down into the back of the loader and you've got these blue tabs you're going to make sure you're sweeping underneath the top tab on either side and then press the front down until this black tab locks into place and your tray is locked into your bottom plate. Once that's locked in we're going to come right to our front again you're going to hook uh, the front of your shell into the loader like so. Rotate down to the back and then you're just going to push down until it snaps into place. So once that snaps down, we'll push our tab back down, locking the two shell halves together, 
and then we can close our lid, push up on this tab to let it drop down. So we'll pull back on that, let it drop down, and our loader is back together. So that's the HK loader. Um, obviously, you can kind of see the similarities between the rotor and the HK. Um, being able to take those apart. Very quick, easy to take apart loaders, easy to get to the main tray, um, and something you should be able to clean out even in the pits, um, you know, in just maybe a couple minutes. You can get a real quick wipe down with a microfiber and get back in the game. Um, every now and then you'll even see some players actually doing it on the field if they really screw up. Or just ball break, brittle paint. Yeah. You know, brittle paint. So break a lot of paint there. It you know it keeps it simple, um, especially like with the rotor. You can very quickly get to the main tray, get that all cleaned out. Um, it takes just a couple minutes. All right, moving on. We got our GI LVL. Um, again, very similar in look and design to these other two loaders. Basic same concept with most of them. Um, we can pop our lid off here, and we have the regular uh, lid installed with the rain cover. That's how, this how it comes. That's how you purchase the the, the LVL. It comes with that yep. already installed, just like that. So it comes with the speed feed, um, but it has the rain cover on top. So this acts as a normal lid. Um, you can see that hard plate there. But if you want to just run your speed feed, if it's not bad weather out, or you're going to play a tournament, or what have you. The way to get this rain cover out is actually very simple. You're just going to take your finger in between um, your couple uh, uh, fingers of your speed feet, and you're going to press down on the front part of that shell where it connects. And you literally just push out, and it'll pop right out. So and there's your rain cover lid. Um, so you can easily pop that right back in, hang on to that, don't lose it, um, throw it back in your gear bag. So there's your speed feed, and now we can just drop them straight in. Don't have to worry about opening the lid up. So once we got that open to take our shell apart, we're going to pull up on this black tab, which is spring-loaded, and then we're going to push right here on this uh, bottom serrated portion of the button, which pops that open, and then we're able to lift the back of our shell off and then rotate up and out. And you're going to pull this forward. As you come across, you can see how you've got your tab here. Kind of see it. So this hooks in right on the front of the nose of the loader. Um, you can see you've got your pocket here for that to lock in. Now we have our main tray. And the main tray for this loader doesn't really lock in. Um, like the other two. Uh, it's supported by these two fins, which is actually part of the outer shell, and that's what holds it down in place when the two shell halves are together. So we can pick up on the front and just lift it straight out. Now we have our bottom shell half. You can get down to your base plate shell and clean all that out, uh, wipe it down. Your power button's right back here, so it's a good thing to check out if you're having a sticky power button. Make sure that's all clean, no paint in there. Very similar to the other two loaders. Um, like I said before, your barrel swab right down through the feed neck. Get that all cleaned out. So now we got our shell halves taken care of. And then we come to our main tray. Um, this main tray is very simple, um, very put together, and it's something you're not really going to take apart much farther than this. Um, this is held together with screws. You got your screws here, here, and here as well as you have part of your sensor for your board which senses whether the paintball is in there screwed down right here. Um, so it's kind of a bit more of a pain to take apart and you really don't want to delve that far into it. Um, it's not something you're going to do on a normal basis. That would be something you do um, every few tournaments. Um, but you're going to be able to take and put a microfiber right down through here and just kind of pack that in and twist around um, and get most of that cleaned out. Um, We've got our floor plate right here. You can wipe all that down. Um, and it's very easy access. You don't have a lot sticking up. Um, because the LVL uses this rubberized uh, drive wheel, you can kind of see those nubs sticking off. And that's what's actually going to drive some of your paintballs in, as well as this um, basically auger hook that's going to come around and catch them, uh, driving them down into there. And this whole bottom plate is going to rotate. you got your battery. Um, 
four AA battery tray right here. And you just pull up on this tab. It's on the side. You pull on that tab right there. And then the whole battery tray comes out. Um, standard four AA tray. It's very easy to replace. Um, you know, if you do break it or need to. And just put your batteries in there, drop that back in, push it back, and it just snaps in. Um, and that's not going to go anywhere. You've got your board at the back. Make sure you just wipe that down with microfiber. Don't press very hard. Um, just make sure that that's all clean off. There's no paint or anything sitting on there because um, that could cause your board to short out. Um, a lot of guys, you know, they get basic. Um, it's similar to water damage, and they think with their boards shorting out, um, but it can actually be caused by uh, paint fill. Um, it doesn't have to just be because you played in the rain. So make sure you're cleaning your boards off um, just lightly with a microfiber. That's all you have to do. Make sure that your uh, teeth on your gear down here are all intact. They're not getting rubbed off um, and that your mesh with the smaller gear uh, right between the two large gear and the small gear coming off the motor. Make sure that mesh is all good and there's no issues there. Um, and make sure that your screws, none of these backed out because that could cause some issues with these uh, drive wheels. Once you got all that taken care of, wipe it back down. Very easy to put back together. You're going to take the back end, drop it in, uh, very similar to the HK, and then you're just going to drop the front piece down. Uh, when you look at these side panels, just make sure they line up and there's no um, break in this groove. That should be pretty seamless and they should fit right in there. You should not have to force this at all. Um, there shouldn't be any reason to push anything in. You're not going to hear anything snap. It just drops into place. Yeah, Brian, we're seeing a lot of LBLs out here. Uh, we also see a lot of rotors in the, in the HK. So these are kind of like three of the, the, the main poppers, I yeah. guess, right now that are out that are, are used. But, uh, yeah, we're seeing a lot of people with the LBLs. Um, and we can order any hoppers here at Mad Cow. Um, so come on down and we'll, we'll get that taken care of. Steven, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, sorry, man. Cut you off no, there. you're fine. <laughs> um, like I said, it's kind of – we sort of – fly by the seat of our pants sometimes with this, so uh, we kind of jump in here and there. It's not a big deal. Um, and yeah, these are the loaders that we're seeing. Um, we do see some of, uh, like the Virtue Spires. Um, yes. That's another popular loader we're seeing a whole lot of. Um, very, very similar uh, takedown um, with those as well. Uh, most of these loaders, you just really need to get your shell off and get down to your tray. Um, and you don't usually have to go a lot farther than that um, to get them wiped down and get back playing. Now, obviously, if you get broken paint in there, you're going to want to really take your time and go through and clean it. But if you're trying to get back out on the field, um, you know, just taking a microfiber and wiping down this tray, uh, it's going to make a huge difference for you, um, especially your accuracy. Um, if you get a lot of oil um, down into your loader, paint, fill, shell, um, anything like that, that's going to really affect not only um, how the loader's performing, it could cause it to jam. Um, and you can run into other issues with that, but also it's going to affect your accuracy. Um, if you have paint on there, more than anything else, having clean equipment is what will affect your accuracy of your paint. As long as you have good paint that's not overly oily, doesn't have dimples in it, um, making sure your equipment is clean is going to affect that a lot. So if you got a lot of oil and paint in here, it's basically just going to create an oil slick in your barrel, and it's going to cause your um, paintballs to fly very erratically. So Wiping this down real quick, um, very simple, very easy to do, but it makes a huge difference um, in your gameplay, and it's going to make your life a lot easier. So we go to put this back together. We're just going to take our front tab here. We're going to lock that into the nose, um, like I showed before, right there in that slot. Just make sure the floor plate stays pressed down. Um, I like to just drop my finger over the top and hold it down like that, and we're going to slide the nose in. And then once the nose is all the way seated, just take our finger back out and bring this right down. Again, pull up on this tab and push up, and it'll drop right back down. And then you can should let you, this button down. So you should hear it quick. And you can press on it right there, and it'll snap down. So once this is flush and this black um, locking tab comes back down, you know your two halves are back together. Um, again, go along the side and make sure that there's a seamless fit between all these shells when you put them back together. You shouldn't have any issues. You can see right here, this one actually kicked up a little bit on the front, and we can just push down on that, 
and it's seamless back together. There's no gap. Um, because if you guys do get a space up in front, if you don't get it put all the way back together, you can get shot off the nose of your loader, and that's just going to shoot right in, the same as if you would have just broken paint in your loader. Um, so just make sure your shells are all the way back together. And put our lid back on. I'm really just going to close it like that. Now we have our speed feed good to go. If we want to put our rain cover back on, it starts raining. We're just going to take the back end, hook it into these slots right on the back. It'll hook in there and then just press the front down until it snaps and now your rain cover's back on and you can use this like a regular lid. So there's your GI LVL. Last, last but not least, Steven. The good old gravity fed. There you go. Now you know, okay, they're all kind of the same. You got the sports shots, you got Low profiles, yeah, uh, hundred uh, rounders. Your Titman uh, loaders, um, yep, yep. yep, they're all going to be kind of the same. Um, so our regular old two hundred count gravity feed loader. Easiest way to clean it: throw the dishwasher, hose it out, then throw the dishwasher. <laughs> yeah, just hose it out. Uh, just spray some water down into it. Is honestly going to be the easiest way to clean this. But if you're at the field and if this is all you have. Um, you know, you don't want to have water inside your loader and inside your marker. Um, so if you don't have time for this to dry out, we'll show you how to take this part and clean it, but it's very time consuming. Um, so obviously, unlike these loaders, these are all toolless, and you saw me just take them apart just that fast, and I was going pretty slow with it. Um, most of these loaders you can take down in maybe 30 seconds. 45 seconds. Um, this loader here, we're just going to show you where you take it apart. We're not actually going to take yeah. this one apart just because, I mean, it, it's pretty simple. Yeah. As soon as so, you take these screws out. Yeah, the, and that's the bulk of it. Um, the only difficulty people tend to have is right up here at the top, you have a spring right in here. There's actually a hole inside the loader um, that you have to place it in. And I don't know if you guys are picking up there. You might see it, that little shiny silver. That's actually the tab for the spring um, that's hooked under the loader lid and that's what's going to cause it to spring forward when you open it up. Um, so making sure you're getting that spring lined up and it's hooked properly, um, that's going to be one of the biggest challenges with this loader um, and the most time consuming part of it. Um, this is the only loader that you do need a tool to take apart, you just need a regular Phillips head screwdriver. You've got two screws right here, another screw at the back, your lid screw screw right down in here at the top and then you have a screw up here at the front and we 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 don't recommend taking this apart to clean it i mean that's like bare bones like you have to do it because you blew up a whole pod and you got mud and you forgot about it and it's dried and yeah. it sat in your bag for two three years i mean if you really need an in-depth clean that's when you're gonna have to take all the screws out and this is something you're usually gonna do at home um, in the off season, yeah. But like I said, we normally don't recommend doing it. Just, just a good rinsing, soak it in some water. It yeah. should take care of it. Just me. rinse it out. Usually, I'll take a uh, a microfiber or a rag, and I will just pack this in here, and just twist it around, um, and that's going to handle the bulk of it. Um, unfortunately, with the gravity feeds, they were uh, they were designed to be a low cost option. Um, and they were not designed for ease of maintenance, where a lot of your more modern loaders have started getting into that toolless design and being very quick to take down and quick to take apart and put back together. Um, so just something to consider if you're running the gravity feed. Um, you have the field, try to shove a rag down in it, get it cleaned out as best you can. Um, you know, if you try to take these screws out, take this little thing apart of the field, I can almost guarantee you're gonna lose that little spring and then you're not going to be happy because you're going to have to hold this up every time you open it. It's just not fun. So, something to think about um, and to keep in mind, but that is your standard gravity feed loader. All right, guys. Well, uh, thanks for tuning in. And like I said, if you have any suggestions or anything that you'd like to see tech in the future, please leave it in the comment section. Uh, we'll go through it. Uh, next week, uh, Matt Romy will be back, I believe. If not, Steven will be here again. Um, and we will go back to taking uh, and cleaning a marker. Uh, I'm not sure what we're going to do yet. It might be a Bob Long. might be a die. Uh, might be a Winchester. Uh, who knows? I mean, we want to try to appease everybody here.
So uh, if you guys have anything that you want to see, just you know, let us know. You can always uh, post up on the Mad Cow page. You don't have to post on the live feed even. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, Mad shoot Cow. us a message. Let us know what you want to see, and we will try to get that taken care of. Um, remember, we can get you anything out here at Mad Cow Paintball Pro Shop. So come on, to Mad Cow. And if we don't have it, we'll order it for you. Yep. So guys, get out and play, um, especially tomorrow. For some yep. of you guys seeing this, we've got the uh, Sucker, Sucker Free Sunday. Bob White Sucker Free up. Sunday. It's the eighth one, barbecue with entry, uh, raffles. They're giving away a couple of markers, uh, some jerseys, uh, jersey t-shirts, shorts, and um, just all kinds of yeah, all kinds of goodies. We probably could have done that, so we wouldn't have to look at the map yeah. a little bit. Um, as always, this is a light snack production. <laughs> Where they light snacks. Right here. Um, the yeah, guys, uh, get out, get out and play. Um, you know, like I said, we we're here to teach you how to tech. You're gonna take care of it, but the goal of that is to get you on the field and have you playing and having a good good time. Um, we're always here to help out if you need it. If you ever have any questions, you're at the field. Feel free to come find us. Um, be happy to help. But if you guys have any, um, you know, videos you want to see, please shoot us your suggestions. Um, but overall, get out there and play. Have a good time. Um, you know, even if it's not mad cow, get out, play the game, and help some new people. All right, guys. Take care. Pew pew.